I do a little bit of animating myself. Animating is really fun. It's really time consuming. Um, but these animations here on Mixamo are incredible. Um, as far as I know, they're open source, like they're CCO license basically. Um, so you can use them, modify them, whatever. Um, you know, please take a look at the license just in case I'm not telling you the right thing. But yeah, there's some really powerful stuff on here. So we're going for a zombie kind of character. I took a look through these animations um, and one of these really stood out to me. This one here is kind of like a drunk walk, um, which I think will be really cool for that zombie kind of animation. So you just click on this, hit download. Um, Sorry, I will say you do need to like make an account, but I think you can just like log in with your Google account and then it just all goes through. Um, make sure you check without skin, you really don't need that. And then just hit download. And then there's one more animation I wanna grab. Um, I'm gonna look for, I think it's called Drunk Idol, I think. Yeah, Drunk Idol, um, which is like kind of perfect for a zombie. It's like, oh, they're kind of, you know, they almost look drunk basically. So we're going to get download that. We're going to do it without skin and hit download. Okay, so now we have our two FBX files here. Um, back in the Blender file, I do keep all of these pieces on the rig active, and I'll show you why in a minute. Some people like hiding some of these layers, but we're going to keep them all active. Let's switch to object mode, and you're going to press file, import, FBX. So I'm in my folder here. We're going to start with the idle one. And under animation, sorry, under armature, you want to check automatic bone orientation. Okay. Uh, so check that, press import. And yeah, it just pops right in there. If you hit play, um, you will see that animation. For the retargeting process, what you want to do is make sure that rig is clicked on and then go to rest position. All right. Um, you also want to adjust the scale, but that scale is almost dead on. And the reason for that is because we made our model like 1.8 meters tall, 1.78 or whatever, right? Which is typical six foot, five foot, 10, whatever within that range. All right. So on the Rococo tab, once you've got that add-on installed, go to retargeting and then you use the source eyedropper. We're going to use that and click armature. And then the target is going to be our rig so one thing i will suggest at this point because we've got a lot of rigs going on here um let's go ahead and uh, hide the original um meta rig we don't need that anymore at all really okay so this is going to help simplify this a bit and then we'll bring that armature back and the target that we're baking to is the um is the rig that was generated so what you need to do you just hit build bone list um takes a second and what I'll do is I'll scroll through here and you can double check that yours all match the only thing you need to remove is this deformation bone we shouldn't be modifying deformation bones at all um, with the way rigify works uh, we should only be modifying the control bones um, for purposes of animation so just delete that you don't need that base spine um, there's a reason for that um, but we're not gonna worry about it and then what I'll do is I'll just do a slow scroll through and you can pause the video so you can kind of double check all your stuff. All right. So hopefully all that matches. And when you get to that point, you just hit retarget. All right. So retargeting, um, that is going to place an animation on our control rig and really the rest of this video, we can just hit play here so you can see. Yeah, like that looks awesome, right? Like the retarget was, worked really well. Um, it just, yeah, just basically works right out of the box. So super impressive. We're gonna go ahead and hide our armature. And the rest of this thing is now just dealing with Blender animations, which is a huge pain. Um, so I'm gonna try to take my time and make sure I explain this as best I can. Um, our goal here is Godot, so getting everything into Godot in a good way. Um, so this workflow will probably work for other engines too. Um, but Godot has a really good integration with nonlinear animation tracks or NLA tracks they're called. So let's first go to layout and let's zoom back in here. Okay. So we're in layout. I'm going to get my textures back and then we can see scroll out. This is kind of the keyframes we have here. Um, I might do a couple of screens here. So we're going to split this. And usually I like to keep the timeline here just so I can change the, the number of frames that are playing. 
Um, maybe there's a better way to do it, but I don't know. So on the one on the right, you're going to go to dope sheet and then action editor. So if we pan this over just a bit, um, this retargeted animation is what was created. And we see it has the shield or fake user by default, which means, which is nice. So like you can't uh, lose it in case you clear it from the active action. Um, but what you really want to do is we're going to rename this idle and then we're going to hit the stash button here. So stashing says store this action in the NLA stack as a non contributing strip for later use. If I'm being completely honest, I don't fully understand NLA myself. Um, so I, I'm not necessarily going to be, ex be able to explain why we need to do all these things. A lot of this came from experimentation. All right. So if you press stash, uh, it looks like your animation disappears, right? So we can see the armature animating in the background, but our character model is kind of just stuck now. So what's going on? Um, so what you want to do is you want to switch from this to nonlinear animation. Now there's a few things going on here. And I think the first thing we need to do is just delete the armature that came from the Mixamo rig. So um, before it was armature, now it's armature.001. That's because I had to redo a little section because I actually messed it up when I did the recording. Um, but you're going to click on this guy and then delete hierarchy. So we don't need that anymore. Now, uh, we do have a couple actions hidden here on the action stash. Once again, this is because I kind of messed some stuff up. Uh, let's see if we can correct this. So if I select this one, um, we go edit, delete uh, track, and then now we're just left with this one. So what you can do in the nonlinear animation panel, really we just wanna be focused on whatever's under the rig here. And that refers to this top level rig. It doesn't refer to this one. So the animation is applied to this top level rig. And what you can do is if you click on a strip here, this is called a strip. Um, if you go to act, uh, action clip, you can actually see what's active here. So I'm going to try to rename this. We're just going to call it idle. Uh, oops, we'll take out the period. I like everything to match. So I'm trying to show you how to clean this up and make it kind of perfect. So we're going to have the strip name idle. The action clip is idle. That's what we renamed from earlier. And then the action stash. I don't know why there's so many different names here, but we're just going to make everything the same name. You'll see why in a second. So we're still like nothing's happening here, but if you go up to this yellowish thing here that says no action, now we can actually select that action and we can go ahead and see that animation. So that's kind of how you get things into the NLA um, panel. And then when we export into Godot, they'll all come in as independent actions, which is like, it's great. You're gonna see, you're gonna see soon. So um, with that done, let's go ahead and grab another model. So. I downloaded both of my models. I should have a walking animation as well. So I have walking one FBX. So what we're going to do is we're going to do file import FBX walking one. And same as before, you want to make sure automatic bone orientation is on. So hit import. Now, um, for the imported model, we're going to want to switch that to rest position. And for this model, you know, it's like halfway through an action right now. So that's also not where you want to be for retargeting. So back to this yellow tab, you're going to press X that clears the active animation, but you can see the, the rig is still stuck in that pose. So if you click on the rig and you go to pose mode, you press a to select everything and you come up to pose, press clear transform and then all. And then you're back into T pose. Okay. So that's where you want to be in the retargeting process for sure. All right. So we're going to retarget again. We're going to clear the armature here. Um, our rig is still our target. Then we're going to use the eyedropper and then select armature O2. Uh, so we build a bone list, same as before, right? We're going to take out this second one here because it's a deformation. We shouldn't see any deformation bones. I always kind of like to give a quick double check. And then we do a retarget animation. All right, so we go ahead and retarget. And that's done now. And let's go back to the action view. So we go dope sheet, action editor. Um, and I'm going to fix up these frames, right? Because that's why I have this timeline here on the left. This guy looks to end at frame like 76. All right, so we're going to change this to frame 76. I'm going to rename this to walking. Okay, 
and then we're going to stash it. Um, so it's not going to, we don't see that doing anything here anymore. So once again, the Mixamo rig, I'm just going to delete hierarchy on that right away, just so it's kind of out of my, out of sight, out of mind, right? Uh, N key to remove that. Then we take a look at nonlinear animation and we have this other action stash here. So this is like the normal workflow I would expect. Um, I apologize. It was a little messy earlier because I messed something up, but we had idle that we fixed all that up. Now we have walking. Um, you can see it ends, starts on frame one, ends on frame 76. I'm going to rename this to walking. And then finally, when you click on this, now we can select walking from here. So this does have a little bit of a problem. You'll notice it is actually moving forward uh, in the y-axis. So for a game model, you definitely don't want animations to be, or you usually don't want animations to be moving the model. All right, so how do we fix this? So make sure the action is selected here, right? So we selected walking from here. And then let's go back to dope sheet. Um, so walking is here, hit the drop down. Sometimes this doesn't appear. I don't know why. <laughs> Other interesting things with Blender, you know, that I can't explain. But to fix that, if that happens, you go into tab mode, uh, select all, and then tab out, and then everything appears here. So um, that kind of, and even then, I think we picked up a couple other things. So under the root, you'll see the root just has rotation, but the torso is the next location you want to look at. Just uncheck the Y location, right? So if you uncheck Y location, then you don't get it. Now, one thing I will warn you about, like if you're here, if you make the model go to here and you uncheck Y location, it actually is going to stay stuck at that location. So you need to be careful with that. So what I would always do is scrub the animation back to frame one, go into pose mode, uh, select everything, and then we'll clear the transform right from the start, and then go back to object, and then run the animation. So finally, we have kind of what we were looking for, right? Um, now we have that walking animation, and we can switch back and forth between these two um, easily, right? Your number of frames is not gonna line up here in the timeline, um, but we have these two um, that we can easily switch between. And you can do this for any number of animations, uh, whether you bring them in from Mixamo or you create them yourself. Uh, this, will, this will always work. So what I want to get to in the next video is importing this into Godot, and you'll see how, uh, how seamless this is. Like it's really, I'll show you all the import settings I use, and then we'll get into the Godot side of things. All right, so thanks again for, for watching this one. Uh, I hope to catch you in the next one, and this next part should be, should be wrapping up the whole series, and hopefully this helps you with your, with your character animating and rigging and all that fun stuff. All right, see you later.